Today we're going to tackle how to hack your way to style, functionality, and storage when your main bathroom is as small as some people's powder bath, the way that mine is. It's tiny. But what's great about working with a small space is that every accessory counts so much. So I'm really going to focus on how you can use accessories to take your tiny rental bathroom to a luxurious five-star hotel feeling haven. Let's do it! Here is where I'm gonna make people mad though. There's always one part in a makeover where I make so many enemies. So this is it. Safety. I just feel rude. I have a rude feeling inside me. This video is sponsored by Rent. More about them later. This was my starting point, my tiny rental bathroom. And before we get into the problems, let's start with a little gratitude. I'm grateful for high ceilings, a cute as heck console sink, and no need for a moldy shower curtain. We appreciate. On the flip side, it's hideous and <laughs> makes my eyes bleed. The console sink means there is absolutely no closed storage. Everything's out in the open. Also, this toilet paper holder has been broken and lying on the ground for a year and a half because I have a commitment to either going all in on a project or refusing Using to do absolutely anything at all. So after a year and a half of living here, let's go all in. Start out with a little bit of paint. Who'd have thunk it? Something happened with this makeover that has never happened, which is that I made a big decision that I ended up hating, absolutely hating. And I ended up having to redo like half of the makeover, which is why this makeover is gonna be split into two videos. I like completed the whole makeover sat with it for like a week and was just like, I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> we'll get to it, but there is a major, <laughs> major decision I make in this makeover that I hated. Watch and see. Okay, bathroom is painted. The next step I'm gonna do is, is not the correct next step. I'm gonna tell you why. I know I'm gonna do a floor tile and a wallpaper, classic moves, classic me moves. And I should do the wallpaper first because the tile might come up over it. There, it's, there's an order to it, which I'm going to consciously ignore. And that is because I need to do something fun right now. And I am so excited to put these floor tiles on and I need a pick me up. And I've been thinking about putting them on and just waiting and waiting and waiting because I'm working on two other videos right now. And I just want to do something that makes me feel excited. I just want to tile the floor. I need this right now. And it's not the correct order to do this in, but I just need it. You're going to understand when you look at this. We are doing this like almost pepperminty green. What color green? No, it's like a sea foam. Sage, I don't really, I'm not that good at colors. I don't know if you guys have noticed. A sage and like a cream checkered tile floor. I'm out of breath thinking about it. Also, I did just cut my bangs and look at how good that went. I need this, I need this. Here we go. This is also my personal productivity hack when I'm kind of like procrastinating on a project. There's usually one step that gets me the most jazzed. Do that step up top, do it first. I'm already happier, I'm already happier. Oh my God, I'm happier now. Oh my God. Whether it's a room makeover or a work assignment or something, there's there's usually one step that gets me the most amped. If I move that up top, I've got momentum for the whole project and it gets me going in a better way. And these are my favorite renter floor tiles. I'll link them. They're the best quality. They hold up even in a steamy shower bathroom. I don't know. I have very romantic feelings for these floor tiles. I can't say enough good things about them. Let's put that lid down. Excellent. This tile's looking amazing. It is looking amazing. I'm over the moon. It's always stressful, like mid-project when it's happening and it's half done and it looks like trash. Like it has to get worse before it looks better. But I'm over the moon about it. I'm proud of myself. Um, I wanna change gears for a moment to share a really fun DIY wall decor project that anyone can do. 
In my very traditional feeling bathroom, I wanted to add a more contemporary feeling piece of wall decor because friction is one of my favorite design elements. So I grabbed a bunch of origami paper, but you can use any colored paper, and I sketched out a figure that I will first use as a stencil. Also, when my mom watches this video, she's gonna kill me for using a pair of sewing scissors on paper, but they, it, they just make such clean cuts. I can't help it. And then I just traced and glued together a little color blocked artwork. I love coming up with projects that anybody can do because it genuinely breaks my heart when people get super discouraged doing an art project just because they don't have some technical skill. You don't have to be a trained, amazing artist to do a fun project that you're proud of. And I absolutely love this end result. It just feels bright, sweet, and you can completely customize it to your own space. And I'm gonna hang mine up later on in the video. We're putting up wallpaper. Let me get this wallpaper. Girl, please. Hello? Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Um, I'll link the wallpaper as well. Super good quality. I wish these hoes would sponsor me. I have asked them. They do not seem interested. I don't think they do sponsors, but whatever. It's good, it's a good product. I'm gonna do, let's bring you over, get a good toilet angle. Hello? Okay, not my best angle. I'm gonna do wallpaper like two thirds, two thirds up the wall. And then we're gonna top the wallpaper where it stops. We're gonna top it off with just like one simple piece of, um, what the heck is the word? What the heck is the word? Trim. Thank you. I like having a lot of color contrast, but for this time I wanted to just do an immersive sage experience because it's small and I don't want to be breaking stuff up. I think it's gonna be cool, y'all. We'll see. I'm gonna just go for it. Ha ha. I like to just stick it down so it's up there and then we can adjust it. Oh my God, if I laid it perfectly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a fit. If I did it this perfectly and I'm amazing, I'm throwing a fit. Basically, no matter the consequences, I'm throwing a fit. If it, do, if it goes well, if it goes badly, I'm throwing a fit. Installing wallpaper is a great way to force yourself to work on your patience. Ooh, looks like I'm throwing a fit. Good guys, good guys. Somehow I laid it down perfectly parallel to the wall on the first try and that will never happen again. Yes. Wow. The heck? Literally, how did I do that? I don't know why that worked. I don't know why. Let's look at this. Hold on, because I'm a time lapse you. Really important tip I forgot to say, before you go and wallpaper your whole bathroom, make sure to do a test patch somewhere if you have a shower to make sure the moisture won't unstick your wallpaper. You gotta test it out first and make sure that there's like enough ventilation. Okay, I got that whole side of the bathroom covered. It's pretty good. I thought that was gonna be a lot more painful. I thought it was gonna be a lot more painful. I actually have to do it under the sink still, but I thought the toilet was gonna be, bad was not. Here's where I'm gonna make people mad though. There's always one part in a makeover, any video I do where people get, I, I make so many enemies. So this is it, this is your moment. I do not have the tool, a very specific tool required to remove this bar from the wall. Don't have the tool, won't be removing it. I'm going to wallpaper around it and it's not gonna be that big a deal. But a bunch of people are gonna cut ties with me permanently over this. Ready? Here we go. This is part of my brand now. Cutting this corner is part of my brand and I actually think I'm very good at doing it. I'm like very talented at cutting quarters, much more than I am like talented at any other thing. Truly these projects are supposed to be fun and creative so don't stress out if you hit an obstacle. When you get to something you have to go over, just like cut a slice over it. Cut a slice and then you just lay it down flat around it. Okay. Not my best camera angle, but once you make that first slice, lay it down flat and then just make little cuts around the object. Wow. I'm very proud of myself. Look at this ding dong. Look, can't even tell gonna be great. Don't stress out if you have to do a little bit of like patching up with spots, no one's gonna notice. If I was paying to get this professionally done in a permanent home, sure, get a little more anal. But otherwise, make it easy on yourself. And I do recommend covering the outlet covers for a more seamless look.
Okay, I'm filming in the shower for a moment because I don't know where this clip is gonna come in the makeover. So I don't, I don't know what I can show you guys yet, but I wanna talk to you real quick. Is it so echoey? I feel like it's so echoey. This entire video is gonna be so echoey. Okay, never mind. Just don't, just don't look at anything. Just look at me, just look at me. Don't look at anything, don't look at anything, don't look at anything. Okay, maybe I should have thought about this before I started filming. I've talked about this before, but one of the most important things that is making this rental makeover possible is the fact that I've like given myself a good foundation with the apartment I chose in the first place. It's so important when you're doing your apartment hunting, especially looking for a rental when you can't do a renovation and break down walls and like change everything, make sure you're giving yourself a good starting point. It's hard to be patient. For me, that was the hardest thing is being patient when looking for a rental. I have patience for nothing. I have patience for nothing. But if you can hold out, you will be happier in the end. If you don't know where to start, rent is the simplest way to find an apartment that you'll love. I love their platform. I asked them to sponsor today's video. It's an online marketplace where you can search for rental properties in the US. The listings include apartments, homes, condos, townhomes, and the mission is really just to simplify rental hunting experience by delivering the fastest way to connect the renter to the right place at the right time. Finding your dream rental. Give yourself the foundation of like good bones in your apartment. I was so picky with my list when I was apartment hunting. I was so picky and it really paid off. And there's not one right answer. Like it depends on what's important to you. For me, I know I do love the tall ceilings. I need a lot of natural light. Prioritizing your wish list of items when you're looking for your rental space is really, really important. And it just gives me like a great canvas to start decorating on top of. It makes a huge difference. And like I said, there's there's no right or wrong answer, but just getting really clear on your wish list and using a platform like Rent to hold out until you find that place. Whether it's being near a dog park, um, having a coffee shop nearby that you can walk to, in unit washer and dryer, tall ceilings, interesting architectural details. Like my apartment is so cute and half of it's the decorating, I think that I did, but half of it is just the bones I started with. Really lovely bay windows, a fireplace in two of the rooms. Even the nooks and crannies, like my narrow little hallway, it has a lot of character because of the tall ceilings. All of these things are items that I, I couldn't put in place on my own. I had I had to I had to find it in the rental. It always feels discouraging until you find that perfect place and then you're so happy you you held out and rent makes it a lot easier. So if you're dreaming of your perfect rental place, I definitely recommend checking out rent. Get clear about what you want. You know what you need. Don't let anybody else tell you what you need and check out rent to get connected with that dream. Thanks some for sponsoring today's video. All right, back into the bathroom. <laughs> Hi, I'm on the toilet. Hi and welcome back to me. To you, nothing has happened, but it's been like two weeks. I went on a vacation. I feel like I got a tan, but looking in the mirror, I'm like, maybe I didn't. But we're gonna finish some stuff up right now. And I will tell you what, I, I'm liking it, but I am not at what we in the design business call a state of, of maximum titillation. I don't feel max titillated and, and max titillation is always the goal. And I think this really needs an accent color to make it pop and to make it more impactful. Um, Cause it's like a really soft green. It's just like kind of melting into the white of the rest of the bathroom. And I really want to add my accent color. The way we're going to do that is with a trim that's going to go just right up on the top edge of the wallpaper. Okay. That's enough talking. That is enough talking. I'm really hoping, I really think that adding this dark purple trim pop is going to make is going to make it. Like right now, I'm a little bored. I think this is gonna make it. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Yeah, this is the beginning of me knowing I was wrong and things really started to fall apart. I don't know, if I'm wrong, <laughs> I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna really speed through this montage because I hate all of it, basically, but I'm not gonna hide you from the truth. Safety. So I was not feeling great about the wallpaper. And power. It was just so cold feeling in there and there was no color breaking anything up, but I didn't want to give up. I thought that just adding a warm pop of color might be able to save it. So I really did my best. Good intentions here, good intentions. Listen, I really put my heart into this, but it just, it just wasn't, it just didn't get there for me. This whole montage, this whole montage, I'm like falling apart internally, but trying to keep it together on camera. I was so upset. 
upset. I was so upset about how this was going. It was not what I wanted. Not what I wanted. Not a smile to be seen. Not a single smile to be seen in this whole montage. I was so sad. I was really despairing. I like really took my time filling the holes and caulking and priming and I wanted to change the color of the mirror too which no is not renter friendly but you can just paint it back afterwards it's fine I like I taped out everything I was gonna paint which I never do I was trying to be extra well behaved I primed everything which I never do I was just like really trying to turn this ship around and this wallpaper ultimately is just not working for me in this bathroom was the real problem. <laughs> I was in denial. But here, I'm gonna let you watch me struggle for a little bit as I painted this whole thing. This is like a sad day. <laughs> look how sad I look. <laughs> no joy. No joy to be seen. <laughs> I hate this. And then I still kept pushing through it. I really didn't come to accept how much I hated this until the end of the video. So we're gonna keep moving forward. We're gonna do a little bit of accessorizing and then I'm gonna have a mental breakdown. You'll see. Okay, new outfit, new day, new outfit. We are moving on to, the, the camera's literally in the shower right now and I'm sitting on the toilet once again. I didn't realize how much of this video was gonna be just me on a toilet, I guess. We're moving on to the major part of what's gonna make this bathroom makeover, which is accessories. In a bathroom this small, it's make or break with the accessories. You know, there's not furniture going in here. You've got a little bit of color on the walls, a little bit of texture, and the rest is just accessories. So in a really small bathroom, especially when you're renting, it's a great time to invest in nice accessories, decorative containers, luxurious toiletry items, towels, other things, because you can take all of those things with you. They're not expiring in this bathroom. Of course, the other thing that's key in a small space is just organization and storage. I have truly no storage in here. It's barely enough room. Look at this, okay? That's, that's how wide the bathroom is. These shelves are the only thing giving me storage and it's barely enough without going hard on visual clutter. I basically can't tolerate visual clutter, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the ways I think through prioritizing storage in a really cramped space where there's really, there's, there's not infinite options in here. Here we go. In this corner, I have both my hair dryer and straightener, but it's really visually busy having both with the wires. If you're trying to optimize your small space, prioritize by frequency of use. For example, I personally only use a blow dryer once a week, so that's gonna go in the hall in my linen closet. The straightener that I use more frequently will stay here for easy access, and boom, instant visual simplification by prioritizing frequency of use. Listen, I don't like putting stuff on the toilet, but sometimes you have to. So definitely lay down a tray to provide at least a little separation. And my favorite thing in this whole makeover are these vintage stone containers I got on Etsy. I put my jewelry in them, but it's also a great way to make your uglier items luxurious and cute. Tampons, scrunchies, Q-tips, hairbands, whatever you don't really want out and seen, but you need to have around, just, just give them the beautiful home. It's so fun. For shelving, let's put those everyday use items down on the bottom shelf so you're not going up on your tiptoes every time you're using that daily moisturizer. Not that it's such an inconvenience to reach up to the top shelf, but if it's a little bit out of the way, you're gonna be less likely to put it back in its place. And that's when things start getting disorganized. So everyday use items go on the bottom, infrequent use items go higher up. Remember that using a tray can really help corral your toiletries and minimize the visual clutter of open shelving. These are trays that actually belong to my grandmother and it's, I don't know, it's really nice to just have like a touch of family history, even in the bathroom. I literally like can't film in this bathroom. Where can I be? Where can I be? I'm gonna lounge on this toilet. Okay, okay. Now, while filming this bathroom makeover, something dangerous happened. It's something that happens to all of us if your decorating space is long enough, which is that I fell in love with an item that was ridiculously priced and really didn't suit the budget. And that item was this custom made, bespoke, 
octagonal wooden trash can. And I wanna talk about the emergency precautions we need to take when this happens. What do you do when you fall in love with an item that does not fit your budget? It happens to the best of us. Listen, first, let's take a breath. Second, if you're online, do a reverse image search on that item. This will pull up any similar looking items that maybe one has a price in your budget. If that fails, do a Google search. Use every relevant adjective you can think of. Exhaust all efforts. No results? Step three, we step away. Then we're gonna sit on it. Then we're gonna sit on it. And if you find yourself still thinking about that item one, two weeks later, okay, we're gonna go back and reconsider. So I'm stuck on this trash can. I'm having romantic dreams about the trash can. I, then I ask myself two questions. Is there a way I can justify incorporating this into the room? And B, if so, is there somewhere else I can cut back in my budget? So for me, I decided yes and yes. <laughs> and I got the trash can. So let's get this guy out of here. Get out. Oh! Look, I mean, hello. This trash can, for all intents and purposes, is the only piece of furniture going in this room. It is like, other than the toilet and the sink. So although it's just a trash can, it's like 33% of the furniture in this space. It makes a big impact. All of that, however, does not change my irksome feelings about the price point. So I decided to cut back and instead I have decided not to replace any of the hardware in this bathroom. I'm usually a big advocate of replacing hardware, but instead I'm not gonna do it. I'm going to keep the towel rack up there, the towel rack over here. That's also why I decided not to replace the larger shelves. So that was all money that I had been expecting to spend. And instead I'm saying it's worth it for the trash can. So those are the steps I would take if you fall in love with something for your space. That's an unreasonable price. I mean, it's not unreasonable like for the, for the actual labor that I had to go into hand making this. It's reasonably priced, but that's why stuff on Etsy is expensive because people are actually making it. It's not a factory. That's the whole point. So don't fault anyone for it costing more. Like people should get paid for their work and I want to find a way to justify it in my budget. So that's how I do it. I can't explain what exactly happened, but there was one night a couple weeks ago that I s lost several hours of my life playing around with an AI image generator. And I, I don't ask me why, I can't tell you why, but I, I generated like hundreds of images of milkmaids DJing in the style of Rembrandt. Um, let me, I'll just show them to you. <laughs> this one has three arms, which I kind of like. I also did this one of my dogs. Um, um, they're dead, they're dead dogs, but I I don't know why. I just loved like the anachronism of milkmaids DJing. Um, I have more. I have more too. But these are the images they generated. Anyway, I'm obsessed with them and I'm gonna hang a whole series somewhere probably, but I wanna I think I'm gonna put one in here. I think it's gonna be this one. I like the drama. And the only thing about the AI image generators is that they kind of mess up the faces. The faces look crazy, which is why I just have them like do it from behind like from the back so you didn't see their face which adds like a fun kind of drama i don't know but i will link all the like online tools the image generator and like the printing stuff i use to make this nothing is sponsored i just was on like a manic rampage one night and i thought this it would be it was a really fun idea because like you don't have to be a great artist to make like fun custom stuff for your home Okay, I'm gonna pause right here. Remember that giant mistake I talked about? 
Well, it was the wallpaper. It was the wallpaper. I ended up continuing with the makeover. I did the whole thing. I finished all the accessorizing, not gonna show it all here. I did all the reveal shots, like all the styling. Thought I was done filming. And then I sat with it for like two weeks and every time I walked into the bathroom, I hated the wallpaper. I hated it and I couldn't figure out why because I actually like, I love the style. I like the colors, but ultimately it's just so cold. The, the cool tones of it, it just feels so cold in there. Earlier in the video, if you remember when I was putting up the wallpaper, I said that I usually don't like to do a room all one color, but I was choosing to override it for this makeover. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> like I, I, I feel like that was completely wrong. I was not feeling it at all. I really, I've sat with the bathroom for like two weeks just to be sure it's good to sit with it. I am liking a lot of the choices in the bathroom, but dang, this wallpaper is like keeping me up at night and it was making me depressed. It was making me depressed because, because it's my work. And the whole point of doing this work is like, it's supposed to be things I believe in. So to put out a project that I like don't believe in and I can't sign off on, I'm like, well, what's the point? Why? Why are we doing this? But this really will, like, it happens. It's probably gonna happen again. I'm not gonna kid myself. Ugh, I'm so annoyed, I'm so annoyed. <laughs> so I've ordered a bunch of new wallpaper samples. They're on the way. I have not installed them yet. I don't know which I'm gonna do. I hope one of them is better. I hope I don't redo this whole makeover and then the one I choose is worse. So we're gonna pause and in the second video, we're gonna do all the rest of the accessorizing, all the rest of the styling, putting up the artwork, do a little bit of electrical work, which I dread, which I dread. And we're gonna try and fix this wallpaper problem. All of that is coming up in part two, which is gonna come out, I think later in May, I believe. It's not, it's not right after this video, it's gonna be in a couple weeks, but it's coming. <sighs> so silly.